Uh, my guest today, you guys, is another agent in our coaching program. She's got an awesome story. Uh, she was able to get her first listing within about three weeks of being a real estate agent, where in this industry, so many new agents have a tough time getting their first listing. Our guest today, Willa, is going to share how she was able to do this. So Willa, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to help and share my story. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So why don't we start off with where, where do you actually sell real estate? What market do you sell? I'm in Chicago. Oh, so cool. All of Chicago land. I love it. I love it. So are you selling like condos mostly, single family homes? What type of homes do you sell there mostly? Um, in Chicago, like downtown areas, all condos, um, but the surrounding areas are all single family. Got it. So, Got it. Blend. Cool. All right. So first I want to understand what led you in the business? Because when we're recording this, how long have you been in real estate as, as we're making this recording right now? About 90 days or so? Um, yeah, about 90 but, days. All right. So what led you to this crazy business in the first place? Um, so I always knew that um, you could do well in real estate. I never thought it was something that I would ever pursue. I just never thought about it. Um, but it was kind of a pandemic decision. I had a lot of free time during quarantine. I was watching YouTube. <laughs> um, so I was following um, this channel called Clear Value Tax. He's a tax accountant. He was making these stimulus check update videos. And one of his videos was like best, highest paying careers because he's a tax accountant and sees what people make. And he said, real estate agents do really well, but specifically listing agents. And so that's kind of what set me off on that whole idea. And since I had a lot of free time, I just signed up uh, to take my licensing course. Um, over the next few months, I took my time just getting that, getting Very my cool. education in that. And so. That's how you do it. So that's great. <laughs> so what, what did you do? What were you doing just 90 days ago before you were a real estate agent? I'm, I'm curious. Um, I was doing like sales type jobs. Um, okay like more like 1099 work, but never outbound prospecting work. So I was basically out of work when the, like everything shut down. Got it. So you were, you were like an inbound sales rep type of thing. Like, mm -hmm. in, in, yeah, got it. Got it. Okay, cool. So what did you, I'm always curious to find out, you know, before people get into real estate, they think it's, it's, it's this way, right? They have this picture of what it's going to be like. Mm -hmm. And then when you got into it, was there any big, like, aha moments? Like, holy crap. I had no idea what I was getting into. Do you remember that at all? Um, so I watched Selling Sunset and I kind of knew that that was not realistic at all. Like just, you know, people fighting in the workplace. Um, but I did kind of think that it might be kind of that way. So, but the aha moment was almost your Kevin Mills interview mm. where he was just basically, I'm a glorified or I'm an overpaid telemarketer. Yep. That's and the that's truth. all it is. <laughs> that's it. I mean, it's real simple. I think people try to make it, it's make it something that it's not. And, mm -hmm. you know, go to your point with all those shows, I, I, I honestly, I think they, they do a terrible job of setting expectations of what real estate actually is like, but mm -hmm. it attracts so many people because I think so many people think real estate is very, very sexy and it's not quite frankly, it is very, very hard work. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. I would definitely agree. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I wish, I wish the industry could set a better expectation. So people, you know, that, that say, Oh, I want to get into real estate and I love houses. It's nothing like that. I mean, this yeah. is, this is direct hardcore sales business. And, mm -hmm. you know, most people, if they knew that up front, they would never even get in the business, which would be doing them uh, a good service. Cause it's like 90% of the people are going to fail out of this business in their first 12 months. Anyways, mm -hmm. you might as well set better expectations, but that's a whole nother thing. I want to talk about you got in this business and you were able to get your first listing uh, before you even hit your 30 day mark in the industry, 
where so many people are unable to do that. So I want to walk people through how in the world did you do that? And the listing source, what was the source of business that you got the listing from? It was only Fizbo's. Got it. All right. So it was a for sale by owner, which is great. That's what we teach a lot in our program. What did you, what was your mindset? Let's walk people through this step by step and break it down. Mm -hmm. So when you first got started and I asked you, okay, you got to pick up the phone, Willa, and you got to start calling strangers. What was your mindset uh, with that in the beginning? Um, I just knew that I had the goal of getting face to face with a certain amount of people and eventually through um, knowing results that your other students have had and the way your program is set up that it will work. So, and it turned out it did. Like one of those, even though there were fully unqualified previews that I was getting in front of, I was still practicing on all of them. And um, like one of them, it just stuck, it worked out. That's great. So, so were you, um... So you had the mindset of like, I'm going to practice blind faith that mm -hmm. this is going to work out for me, uh, not knowing for sure, but you, you did the work, you put it in. So what was certainly, I'm, uh, uh, there was probably some insecurities, some fear, mm -hmm. um, you know, walk us through kind of what your mindset was. Cause part of it was very positive to your point. Like, I know this mm -hmm. is going to work. Uh, were mm -hmm. you scared to make calls in the beginning? Um, yes, it took a lot of like amping up beforehand. And then I would like start later in the day. And then I would finally get like an appointment and be good for the day and not make the rest of the calls because I got an appointment. <laughs> so yeah, that's great. That's great. All right. So so you got over that fear, you started prospecting. Mm -hmm. um, and then you started setting these appointments. What are the appointments like? So you go there and what's your goal on the appointment? So my goal is to, you know, see the home. I want to share with them the information. I spend about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, actually preparing for my previews beforehand. I print out uh, market overview statistics for them that I can go through. I print out um, comparables to share with them just so I have something to offer that they are um, welcoming of instead of just me, you know, looking through their home. And then um, after that, I go into the backup plan and my value proposition, which I think is great. You really set us up for success with the whole value proposition. Awesome. So are people pretty, uh, when you go on these appointments, do, do you find that when you do get face to face that they're more open and laid back versus being so tough on the phone? Um, they could be, I feel like it goes both ways for me, to be honest. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it's the opposite, right? So sometimes how, let me ask face to face and they, they're kind of like resistance when I, um, start my whole presentation, they're like, but I have a lawyer. I don't need a realtor. Yeah. You know, those are the unqualified previews. Yeah. And now you're trying to, uh, work on your skills mm -hmm. to increase the quality, right? Yes. So, so with your first listing, you met them. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so, so let's talk about that one for a second. So you met them. Okay. Were you able to get through the entire preview appointment? Like, were you able to do the home tour, get through the CMA, mm -hmm. go through the value proposition? Do you remember back being able to get through mm -hmm. everything or were you able to just do the home tour? So I got through everything on that one. Um, it was still, I was out of practice, not out of practice, but it was one of my earlier appointments. So I was still at that time kind of rushing through my appointments. Um, so we did the home tour. I did the um, market information with the days on market, why it's important not to go over that and just information about their local area. And then I... Thinking back, I think I was kind of rushing out of there. And then the seller was like, oh, like I really, oh, and then I did bust out the backup plan. And he was nice. <laughs> he yeah. was um, impressed by that, but I didn't really go through the value propositions in depth at that point. But then he like asked me before I left about all of that. I love it. Um, I love it. You're probably a lot more confident now than you were before, right? So yeah, like, yeah. 
So you go through the, the preview appointment and then did you follow up or did you not follow up and they just called you out of the blue or how did it happen where you actually got the mm -hmm. listing? So I definitely followed up. I put them on my mailing list. So they were getting every five days cards in the mail with my smiling face on it. I love it. With the, <laughs> and then, um, you know, the email. Like these, right? Um, not those big ones, just yeah, the this, little yeah. ones. <laughs> yeah, like uh, here, let's see if we got one for the, for the crowd. These, right? Yeah, something yeah. like that. It's like, hey, it's me. We, I'm sending cool. you stuff. <laughs> what else did you do? So you, you were sending them some, you were sending them mailers once a week. Sending what else did mailers, you do? the mailers, the thank you card. Um, I was sending that Friday text. Um, the, I'm kind of sporadic with the weekly email, unless they're on my MLS reports. I don't know if they were or not. Um, and then my Monday calls. Awesome. So, so about so two and a half weeks after me following up, they were just like, yeah, we'd like to have you come over and go over a plan to sell the house. For I the love house. it. Mm -hmm. Well, because here's what happened. You went there, you didn't pressure them. Then you followed up, you stayed top of mind. You provided them value. Mm -hmm. You became the obvious choice during that follow-up period of time because if a for sale by owner decides that they can't sell it on their own and they have to hire a realtor, more times than not, the one that's going to win the listing was the one who met with them, didn't pressure them, was supportive and followed up the most. And that was your experience from two and a half, three weeks in the business. That's exactly what happened to you. So yeah. you got the listing. When you went to the appointment, how hard was it for you to get the, the contract signed or was it pretty simple at that point? So here's the thing. I really wanted to make sure that I was prepared for this listing appointment. Um, so I was watching your listing presentation video um, pretty frequently for a few days and just kind of internalizing all of that. Um, and you really do set us up, up for success by having us basically um, practicing a listing presentation on our previews. That's right. So by the time it came to me, for me to go over there and get the listing, I was all excited to go through the whole thing. And they were just like, all right, that's great, but can we sign now? <laughs> that's awesome. Like, I didn't have competition. Yeah, that's amazing. Good for you. And just before the interview, you mentioned you got another for sale by owner listing. Is that right? Yes. Just yesterday, I got a come list me call back. Thank goodness, because I started like, it was another month of me just kind of making calls and putting people into my funnel and not knowing if anything was going to come of it. So yeah. I'm so happy that something came of it. Yeah. You know, and it's just a process of building this pipeline, you know, mm -hmm. especially with the market right now, I mean, once the market shifts a little bit, you will come out like the for sale by owner queen, you'll start listing a lot more. Um, so, so that's phenomenal. So what, what have you, what's been one of the biggest things you've learned with inside of your first couple of months of being a real estate agent that, maybe you wish you would have known in the beginning? So I think the biggest learning is basically what I've had to learn the hard way through experience. So it's not like I could have told myself in the beginning because um, I could tell myself like it's all in just making the calls and all in like being intentional and all of that. But you really have to feel the pain before you can like get on top of your game. So as long as you stick with um, the actual blueprint of what you're supposed to do, um, it's simple, but it's not easy. That's right. That's right. So, and so that's where we came up with that whole saying, the learnings and the doing. And what you're yeah. saying is you, you, there was nothing you could have said to yourself 90 days ago to prepare mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You had to go on all those appointments. You had to have all the calls. You had to do all the follow-up to mm -hmm. get to where you're at now. What do you think you can accomplish now looking ahead? You know, what are, what are your goals, I guess, for the rest of 2021 and, and beyond? Um, I think going ahead, I'm just really excited about um, making the next step to being more um, upfront and intentional and upfront with my intentions with contacting for sale by owners. I want to get away from the whole, like, I work with buyers and sellers thing. I'm just trying to, you know, 
ask better questions on the phone, have better conversations and have a better system where I can just put a lot more qualified leads into my funnel where everyone's on the same page. I love it. And so really that has to do with increasing your sales skills. So right. And that's exactly where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. You know, essentially 60, 90 days in the game, it's time for Willa now to work on the next phase of her, her development. And that's all Mm -hmm. about sales skills. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's phenomenal. That that's exciting. And what, what is your average price right now in, in your market? Um, it depends. Like there's so many different, uh, like suburbs and neighborhoods. So it really is a range. Yeah. What are the two listings you got? Let's talk Um, about the two listings you did get. So the one I have now is 475. And then the one I just got, they have it at, or they had it at 325. So you got a good price point going. Yeah. It's a pretty good average so far. Yeah. That's amazing. Good for you. Good for you. And now are you working any other lead sources or are you only focused on for sale by owners right now? So I thought I would kind of try with expireds, but I really do feel like I still need to master FISBOs before just kind of looking to other things. Smart. I want to just like hone in and get really good at FISBOs. I love it. It's like I have enough in my market where there's enough to work with. How many? That was my next question. How many are you getting every day, roughly? Um, today was pretty slow. There were only six, which is really low, but usually it's like 15 on average. That's amazing. Yeah. You don't need to work any other lead sources. I think a lot of the other agents are pretty jealous when they hear that. So, and are you getting those straight from Zillow or do you get them from like a lead provider? I use Vulcan seven. So got it. So they go right into your system. They go right in your dialer and then you just call them every morning. Is that right? Yep. Um, I don't use a dialer. I hand dial. Cool. I feel like the dialer is just too much. I want like to be it, in control. <laughs> yeah. It's like too distracting, right? So you hand dial, stay focused. All right. Yeah. So, so last thing I want to cover with you is kind of like what your average day looks like right now, like from the time you wake up and, and what your prospecting looks like and how do you structure your day? Can you kind of walk us through what that looks like? So, um, I always set my alarm for like five 30, but I don't usually get up to like six or six 30. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm good, showered, had my coffee, ready to go, um, had some time to just get my bearings. Um, I really have had um, better results with making my calls earlier rather than later. My pickup rate goes way down after nine. So if I'm just there in the morning calling them. um, So usually by 820, I'm making my first call. Got it. And then you call, how long do you typically prospect for on average? Um, maybe an hour or two, but I'm kind of slow about it. I'm like, yeah. uh, kind of looking and make, taking notes as I go. Um, I'll try to set appointments for that same afternoon. That's ideal. But if not, I'll set them for the next afternoon. And then the rest of the day, I'll just be preparing for appointments, doing other things. Yeah. I love it. I mean, that's, what's great. I mean, As you increase your skills, you can prospect what 60 to 90 minutes and potentially get an opportunity. Like, how many? Let's talk about that. Out of that hour, hour and a half, two hours of prospecting, how many listing opportunities do you think you'll get out of that? How many leads will you get? How many good conversations will you have typically? So, since I'm still working on my skills, only the past like week or so, I've been having really good conversations. Um, I'll get a lot, like five, maybe four or five, like really good conversations where we ended positively. They're open to me following up. I have their email. Yeah, that's great. So, Mm -hmm. so let me ask you, you're getting called four or five a day. Do you think you could get that many listing or seller leads without prospecting, just like hanging out on social media and posting? Or do you think you actually have to pick up the phone and talk to people? Honestly? Um, I don't think that I would be able to generate leads like that without actually talking to people. Like it's all about talking to people. <laughs> I know. Why, why do you think so many people have a tough time accepting that in this business? Or, 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 you know, a lot of us see all these messages from all these marketers, like on Facebook, like, oh, you don't need to call people. Why do you think that people have such a hard time with this concept? I think, well... I mean, this is just me thinking out loud, but it's probably just because there's money to be made and selling a solution that's 
not hard and easy and it's a solution. That's exactly right. <laughs> easy is the best marketing, right? And so, yeah. and then it lets people off the hook. The real estate agent's like, oh, there might be a better way. Let me go try this yeah. shiny object over here. Let me get distracted with all- for something else that'll work because this is like giving me resistance right now. So I'm going to try this thing. Yeah, makes total sense. Because listen, I mean, although direct prospecting gets you the best results, it's also the hardest. So, mm -hmm. and that's like most things in life, you know what I mean? Working out, getting healthy, whatever you're doing in life, typically the thing that's the hardest thing is the thing that gives us the best result. And I think yep. you're right. People try to avoid or take the path of least resistance to get the same results. They want to get four or five listing leads like Willa. They just don't want to pick up the phone and pay the price and work on their skills. They're mm -hmm. always looking for the easy path. So what last piece of advice would you give to a new real estate agent that's maybe watching this, Willa? who is in that boat to say, I'd love to have two listings within my first 90 days. I'd love to get four or five listing leads per day, but I'm just scared to prospect. Um, I would say you have to actually stick to the plan that you choose, stick to the program. Um, don't, I mean, don't give yourself days off I mean, you want to sometimes, you'll take days off, but it's really important because, um, you know, it's a downward spiral. If you're not staying on top of things, like you'll become rusty if you take a day off or two, um, especially when you're so new and building up skills, you need to keep practicing every day. Like think about it as practice. I love it. That's, that's great. It it's great advice. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. I know I, I, I relate this to working out all the time, but like I'm on this, mm -hmm. this workout thing right now. You're right. If you, if you don't go work out for three or four or five days, you take a week off and you go back. It's like you started all over yes. again. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I've done that. And I'm like, what happened to me? I know you feel like you lost everything you worked so hard for just like a week before prospecting mm -hmm. is the same thing. If you're not in a routine and you're not consistently making those conversations, you're going to lose it fast. And so mm -hmm. that's how we build momentum. So, so great, great advice. If anybody has any questions for you, maybe they want to connect with you, can they find you on Facebook or Instagram? Or are you okay if people maybe yeah, reach out for, for help? you can find me on Instagram. Uh, I think it's Willa Pew Realtor. Um, cool. You can also find me on Facebook on my business page, Willa Pew, your realtor for life. Awesome. Well, listen, I really appreciate you doing this. I mean, again, yeah. I think that what you're doing so early in your career, it's exciting for what you're going to be able to do long-term because once you start honing your skills, you're going to go from one listing a month to one listing a week. And that's what's going to happen as you stay more and more consistent, build your confidence, build your skills. So thank you so much for, for jumping on with me today. Yeah. And thanks for having me and allowing me to share. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure I'll see you on our coaching calls, Willa. Have an awesome, awesome <laughs> week. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Take care. Bye.